This here is my State C IS20 Octavia 1.8 and since the M340i and the Octavia both are waiting on some parts and we're kind of running out of content, we thought why not make a video on the Octavia 1.8 and stating some of the flaws it has as a project car. So watch this video before you pick one of these up. First thing that I don't really like about this car is this infotainment system. Now the infotainment system in and of itself isn't that big of an issue but if you want to upgrade the infotainment system uh, into the Android Auto unit that you get in the facelift Octavia 1.8 or even the VRS. Uh, so that is a bit of a task in this car. Now why is it a task? Well the infotainment system and all fits perfectly and you know all of that is completely fine. But the speakers are the limitation for this thing. So this speaker system isn't really compatible with the newer Android Auto unit. So uh, we tried it the other day. We tried to install the Android Auto unit uh, to this car. And yeah, the screen just didn't turn on because the speakers aren't compatible. So if you want to get the newer Android Auto Apple CarPlay head unit into this car, you have to upgrade the speakers to the Octavia 1.8 facelift speakers, which are most of the time the Canton speaker system that you used to get from Skoda. And those I think so cost anywhere from 35 to 50k. So apart from the uh, head unit that you have to buy, which is probably 80 to 90 thousand rupees, if I'm not wrong, if it's wrong, I've probably already put the correct price somewhere on the screen. So combine that with the Canton speaker system and you're basically looking at 1.3 to 1.4 lakhs in just getting Android Auto onto this car. Second flaw that I don't really like and well, it's a pretty big flaw that most people know about is this thing over here. This is a DQ200 DSG transmission and if you guys are unaware, this is probably one of the most unreliable DSG transmissions ever made. Mechatronics failures, DSG failures, clutch failures, everything can go wrong in this gearbox. And just the other day, I had a little bit of a heart in my mouth moment when uh, the coupler of this thing like the lever coupler to the DSG transmission kind of broke and the car wasn't going into gear so I thought for one whole day that uh, I would I had to replace my mechatronics which is like one and a half lakhs for a new one so I was in heavy depression but turns out it was just a 5000 rupee cable not even a cable actually the coupler itself that had to be changed so the DQ200 transmission is not the most reliable luckily I'm running an RTMG race clutch so all of this added power and torque can be handled by this transmission right now so I'm not really worried about it but if you have a stock DQ200 DSG well you know how anxiety inducing that can be Now let's get on to the driving aspect as to why I don't really like the Octavia DSi. And let's be real, I'm talking about my particular car, the setup that I'm running and the way it's driving at the moment. So first of all is the power delivery. This thing is way too fast for Indian roads at the moment. I mean, first of all, the power delivery is just super spiky and that's a characteristic of the IS20 Turbo. And yeah, I mean, it has tons and tons of torque in the lower RPMs. And that makes it very, you know, unpredictable. I wouldn't say unpredictable, but it just makes it very nervous when it comes to putting the power down. I mean, in these conditions right now where there's a quite a lot of dust on the road, this thing doesn't catch grip till like half a fourth gear. That's how much power and torque this thing has. And uh, people will say, you know, I'm a, you know, a little something in that sense that too much power I'm complaining about it. But, you know, power should be usable. You should be having fun with it. And that was the case with my old Laura. It only used to make 235 HP, but all of that was usable power. And I mean, yeah, even if I give it the beans here, it goes all over the place before it catches grip in any sort of shape or form. And the other thing is that it accelerates so hard that you're into the triple digits in no time. I mean, the Laura was a pretty fast car. 
This is a completely different level. I mean, the E A Triple H Gen 3 can make ridiculous amounts of power and torque. The problem is it can't put the power down, and two, it has way too much power once it gets grip. Uh, the upside is that you can put a lot of other cars to shame, but that is if you get the grip. Uh, the other thing I don't like about the Octavia TSI is the way it drives in general. Uh, first of all, the steering. The steering is not as good as I thought it would be. It's very light. It doesn't have any sort of feedback, and you know, it's just a very light and a very easy to use steering wheel, which is good if you're using the Octavia TSI as a normal car. But in my case, I'm using it as a performance car, and that's not a very good sign because. Uh, once you're in the higher speeds, you know, in, into the triple digits or whatever, uh, you want the steering wheel to start getting some sort of weight to it, so that you know it feels more stable. You can give more precise inputs, but that just doesn't happen with this car, and that's because it does not have a variable geometry rack, uh, and that is a little bit of a letdown because, well, you don't really know where the car is going. Um, I mean, thankfully, I have a. Good amount of experience in high horsepower cars, so you know I can handle this power. But uh, you know, if someone is just hopping into this car for the first time and they just rip it down the road, probably they'll <laughs> their pants a little bit because this thing is a little sketchy when it comes to full throttle. The steering definitely needs to start weighing a little bit more, and the only way I think I can fix it is first by you know changing the suspension. Putting in some stiffer struts and springs, and two is probably by putting in a VRS 230s or 245 steering rack, which is a very expensive affair. So I'm definitely not going to be doing that. Last thing that I probably don't like about this thing is the suspension setup, and yes, it is correlated to the way this thing drives as well uh, in terms of the steering. But the suspension right now is just too soft. It's it has too much body roll, and I don't personally enjoy that. The Laura. Had basically stock dampers. It had Miley dampers, which are a little bit better than your stock replacement dampers, and it had Cobra suspension lowering springs, 30 mm drop, and that thing used to handle like I mean, it was so so good. Uh, you had proper feel, you had proper engagement, and I mean, yeah, of course, the six-speed manual gave it a lot of that factor of excitement, but in general, it was just a better handling car, and I think so. That's a big letdown in all of these MQB platform cars now. I know a lot of people might disagree to me because uh, MQB platform cars are supposed to be really, really good, like uh, in terms of handling, in terms of power, and I'm sure they are. But at least in this particular platform, I just find the car to be a little bit too light on its feet. Like it has no feel, it has no feedback, it doesn't feel as stable on the highway as well as my old PQ platform Laura. And you know, those are just some things I wish. Uh, This car came with from the factory, but I'm sure there are ways to fix these problems. And probably once I get a little bit more money in my bank account, I'll probably fix those issues. All in all, I think that the Octavia 1.8 is a really, really good car. And if you don't have the money for a VRS, you should definitely consider one of these. This video was a little, you know, just. An explanation as to what you should look out for uh, when you're buying this uh, Octavia 1.8, because this is not the most perfect car in the world. It has quite a lot of flaws, and some flaws are really, really, uh, you know, that can really change your decision in buying this car or not. So I just wanted to point them out. I personally am really enjoying the build of this car, and I really want to start working on the suspension and other bits to make it actually drive properly. So hopefully, I can do all of those mods in the very near future. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what you think of our Octavia 1.8 Stage 3, and I'll catch you in the next one.